Welcome to African Boss, it's your boy Yao Bantu, Zambian President. Hakainde Hichilema declares food shortage and drought in the country as a national disaster and emergency. What does this mean for the country and how will Zambia emerge out of its triple tragedy? Meanwhile, in Malawi, President Chakwera warns top immigration officials that he is about to replace them as hackers... Uh -huh. continue to hold on to the immigration passport computer systems demanding a ransom they believe that from the government and also some parts of malawi are sadly flooding after the much needed rains some areas experienced very heavy rains and thousands have been displaced from their homes so we've got a lot to talk about today first of all let's go to our neighbors in zambia president hakaindi shilima thursday declared the country's debilitating drought a natural disaster and emergency saying it has devastated food production and electricity generation as the nation battles to recover from a recent deadly outbreak so basically we did see these things in Malawi isn't it we, there were photos circulating in on whatsapp and everything else uh, showing dry maize in the gardens and obviously we had this incline that well look uh, that might happen in in Zambia and also that made people think you know people were afraid that well what's happening in Zambia might happen in Malawi because uh, there were a lot of maize drying in the gardens as well we had the initial rains and then rain has stopped uh, for quite a while and uh, people were just expecting what was happening in, in Zambia to happen uh, to, to Malawi. So obviously it's not a big surprise. The president has declared that it's a state of national disaster and emergency. So like some of its neighbors, the Southern African country Zambia is, is suffering a severe drought as the El Nino weather pattern worsens harsh weather conditions attributed a part to in part to climate change. These are very, very difficult times, very challenging because we talk about climate change, there are conferences, people talk about it on the radio, on TV and everything else. There are organizations dealing with climate change, but obviously it's easier said than done these things. What what do you do? I just think that the thing to do in our countries, both in Malawi, Zambia, is to go with irrigation. I, I, I don't know, how wrong can you go with irrigation? You know, some countries have done it. Israel done it. They produce a lot of food because of irrigation. Uh, they usually, essentially had no water where they settled. Um, but in countries like Malawi, Zambia, they have fresh water everywhere. Uh, so basically, you we should not be having this discussion every year that, of course, there will be no rain and therefore people are going to suffer from um, starvation or food shortages and everything else. I think... I think the best way to do is to just go for irrigation as a more permanent solution because, you know, these days with this climate change, there is just no guarantees that you're going to have the rains as it used to be before. In an address to the nation, President Hichilema said he has instructed security forces to focus more on food production in the largely peaceful country. In addition, the country plans more food imports and is mobilizing United Nations agencies and local businesses to assist. 84 of the 116 districts. You know what? When I was growing up, I was always thinking like Zambia. Yeah, yeah, we know about Zambia, but we always think like maybe we're the same size until you get older and you're from Malawi and you're thinking, man, Zambia is huge. They're like seven times maybe the size of Malawi because we have 24 districts and they have 116 districts so it's it's a big big country uh the drought has destroyed about 1 million hectares of the 2.2 million hectares are planted with a staple maize crop you know what this is another thing I was thinking like can we diversify a little bit uh let us move from the Nchima if you don't have Chima that day you think like you haven't had something to eat I mean, that is just, it's the wrong mentality. But then people say, okay, it's the crop of our ancestors. But that's not true because it, maize is not um, native to Africa. It came from Mexico, brought in by the Portuguese in the 15th century. So before that, we didn't have that. So can we diversify? Because maize is greedy. You know, it requires, it wants all the nutrients. So it requires intercropping. It wants a lot of water. So it's not really an easy crop to grow uh, where well, when we actually have more, more easier and uh, better crops to grow, I think we can all, always diversify so that when we lose maize, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Now, electricity generation obviously is going to suffer. Are uh, the countries expecting to have a deficit of about maybe potentially 520 megawatts by December? So there will be load shedding. Uh, if we need to know about load shedding, I guess we can just go uh, and ask the South Africans. They, uh, they know a lot about load shedding. 
with what's going on down in South Africa there. So uh, potentially that's going to be happening in Zambia. The more I think about it, I think, well, look, you know, this drought is going to cause lots of problems, especially with uh, electricity generation, because now you, you have generate you have electricity generation that is under capacity uh, from the Kariba Dam. And then with this load shedding, if you look at the situation in South Africa, they've lost a lot of money out of it. Remember, I think they were losing about 30 million USA dollars every month. You know, that's a lot of revenue. It is a huge, huge problem. And, you know, Zambia can't afford this. You know, Zambia is not in a position to be losing any more money. As you know, Zambia is in a debt trap, isn't it? We'll talk a little bit, a little bit more about the Zambian death, um, uh, debt trap. And also, Zambia was recently hit by one of its worst cholera outbreaks that killed more than 400 people and affected more than 10,000. I mean, this is the one thing that I'm thinking, why should we even have cholera in this era? Like Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, they were hit hard by cholera uh, the past few years. Even South Africa had cholera. Like, why? But I think, you know, remember President Hichilema said to the people of Zambia that you should move from the urban areas back to the rural areas to reduce the burden of disease. But what it is is because... You know, it, it's waterborne disease, you know, like, and hygiene is the main thing about it. So people just move from the rural areas into this township, into these quarter uh, areas without any plans of where the toll rates are going to be. We just live on top of each other, basically chaos. So then, unless we redesign our neighborhoods, our townships, uh, this problem is going to be there all the time. And I think that is more also a political issue because then we have to have a gutsy president and to say, all right, people, you are moving from here to there because we can't have this. You know, And that is that is extremely hard. I understand from a political point of view, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, so we're going to have, we're going to continue to have cholera as long as you know our urban areas are like the way they are. Uh, there is just no escape except that you have to provide clean water as well as you know improve sanitation so now some zambians have coined uh, this like a triple tragedy because of the coronavirus coronavirus cholera and now uh, the drought maybe you can also add the fourth date trap to it you know zambia zambia is in date isn't a huge huge date and I know that uh, President Hichilima said, you know, we, we have to move quicker on this on this front because then what I'm thinking is you're just compounding problems upon problems, isn't it? I uh, think Zambia is in what they call debt trap by the Chinese or the debt trap diplomacy. So the Chinese normally, you know, give you a lot of money. And then when you can't pay, they come around and say, all right, people, you can't pay. We're going to, you know, you have to do ABC in terms of power, if your country has minerals and stuff like that. So it's, it's something that that African governments really have to be weary of, you know. And now I know people are looking at Russia. Yes, Russia, China and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think China is better than the USA or the European Union. Russia is better than the European Union, the United States of America or the UK. I think they all want something, isn't it? So it's just that we have to make our countries better. We have to have better systems into it, isn't it? We all know this. So yeah, so Zambia, uh, we wish them all the best. Uh, but Zambia, Malawi, Botswana, Zimbabwe, potentially there will be droughts in these countries because of the bad weather patterns there. Now there is an issue of passport hacking in Malawi. Malawi government has suspended the issuing of passports following a cyber attack on the immigration services computer network. President Chakwera told MPs that the targeting of the department amounted to a serious national security breach. So he revealed that the hackers were asking for a ransom. So you have a system, you have the immigration in Malawi and now you have hackers and they want money from the government and then they'll give you back the system. And believe it or not, this has been going on for a week. We didn't know it. We did not know this until the president said it in in the parliament. Said, "Well, you know what? There are hackers out there, and they want ransom. So it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad for Malawi to have this situation going on. No wonder the president was unhappy with it. He said uh, to the immigration office officers, he had a big meeting with the security, immigration, and everything a couple of days ago, and basically told them that I need this system back. If you don't get it back, I will." fire you and put some people who can uh, bring back the system uh, in, in place. So, which is a very legitimate thing to do because it's been weeks. And 
uh, people are not getting their passports. Prior to this cyber attack, there was uh, a lot of backlog already. People have to wait and wait for their passports. So now, now with this attack, there will be more backlog. It's increased, so it's not going to get better. And also because now there is information that's been stolen or whatsoever, so how are they going to recover all that information? So this is just going to drag on for quite a while and it's not good for, uh, for Malawi because then people can't travel, isn't it? Uh, Malawi has a labor policy that trains people uh, for basically for labor or export example uh, the young men and women that are being exported to Israel to work on the farms there and they need those passports isn't it? without the passports they just can't go and also I think they had a, an agreement with the UK for care assistance and stuff like that and they need passports and people need passports to travel to do business so the more the hackers have the system, um, then you know, people can't do anything. Th then the immigration officials came up and said, oh, look, we have 91% of the system. Like, what does that even mean? Like, you know, you can't be coming and say, we have 20% of the system. That you either have the system or you don't. All right. So you either give us the system and start printing the passports. That is why the president was unhappy. You know, he said, no, you know, get back the system or I'll get some people else who can fix it. This is the very first time that uh, I think government uh, information systems have been hacked and people are actually demanding for a ransom. Uh, that's pretty extreme. That's pretty intense. It's not something that normally happens in Malawi. And then the funny thing is the president also launched uh, computer systems or information systems for for land and business um, department. So you can actually go online and apply for a business license. And also you can register your land online. And he emphasized that, look, we have these systems, but we can't have them without any, any security. He was looking to be assured that people won't hack this system again. Like, what's the point of launching that when people are just going to hack the system? I think that was his emphasis. So he was a bit weary, and you can understand him from that point of view. And unfortunately, Malawi is experiencing floods due to heavy rains in the parts of central and northern uh, Malawi. Uh, heavy rainfall across the region in recent days has triggered flooding in, in areas of along Lake Malawi especially. And the authorities have reported one death and also about 7,000 displaced due to this severe flooding in Kota, Kota District in the central region. So then hundreds of people as well have been res rescued from floodwaters uh, in Duangwa and other areas, North Rukuru, Karonga District. So look, you know what? Uh, Malawi is, uh, is still recovering from last year. They had Cyclone Friday where uh, caused a lot of devastation across the country. And to have this, and now there is also uh, the food shortage at the moment. And now we have these floods. What these floods do, they wash away all the crops and everything else and destroy property and stuff. So it is just one thing after the other. I think what is happening in Zambia could be said is also happening in Malawi. We have tragedy upon tragedy. And um, it is a lot. It is a lot for these countries to take. And I don't believe that these countries, you know, we are designed to take this kind of punishment. We can't absorb it financially. Tough times ahead, tough decisions to be made. Uh, I think at certain point as a country, whether Malawi, Zambia or whatever, we just say we can't go on like this. We need to make these decisions. Whether 100%, maybe 50 or 70% of the country are not going to be happy, but these are the right decisions. Anyway, have you have you seen the president of, what is his name, Javier Mili uh, of Argentina? He came into power a few months ago and he says, a few weeks ago, and he said, look, Argentina is broke. Argentina has got no money. So he said, what am I going to do? I'm going to slash the ministries. So he took, <laughs> he slashed the ministries. You know, there's no minister of gender, minister of youth, minister of all this. He's, he just got rid of all of them. He says, we can't have this. We can't afford it. You know, they can be absorbed in other uh, government departments and the government will still function. And he travels uh, commercial. He went to Europe and traveled commercial. You know, and so we need such leaders, I think, in Africa. We, they just have to come in and say, we don't need 20, we don't need 30 ministries. We can use 10. You know, I don't need a jet. I can just jump on a plane. You know, 
He actually, the Argentine president actually threatened to close the Reserve Bank. Nah, because it's perpetuating poverty for, you know, for one reason or the other. And also he wants to be using the, uh, the American dollar because the Argentina, is it peso? The Argentina money is not um, really um, doing anything for them. So he says, okay, I will go to uh, the United States of America and use uh, the dollar. You know, it's more stable. But when I was thinking, can we do that in Africa? You know what? The, there is a lot of anti-Western sentiment in Africa. And now we're talking of de-dollarization. We don't want to use the dollar. We would rather use, you know, um, so I don't think that could happen in Africa at the moment. But in Argentina, he says, no, I will do whatever it takes for the country to get better. Leave your comments below and tell me what you think about the whole situation. And I'll see you next time.